Hey, I'm Ryan with Beerus TV, and today we're gonna do a spotlight on activated carbon. Activated carbon is used in the reef tank for a whole variety of reasons, ranging from removal of general contaminants, dissolved organics, undesirable odors, yellowing pigments in the water, removing the buildup of toxins that corals and algae emit to fight each other, really all kinds of things that are really difficult to remove with almost any other method other than manual removal via water changes. I'd say the number one reason is those yellowing pigments in the water, which are both a visual indicator of pollution building up in the water, but also make the corals more drab and can easily reduce the overall PAR transferent from the light to the bottom of the tank by 30% or more. You may not think your water is yellow, but the best time to notice is actually when the lights are out. The water should be crystal clear with near zero yellow tint. Even better, next time you do a water change, fill up a white bucket and you'll see exactly how yellow water is. It should be a crystal clear blue and shortly after running some carbon, you can clean up the dirtiest of water and return it to that crystal blue state. I also personally use carbon as a general backup insurance against accidental introduction of undesirable contaminants introduced via my hands, broken down or failed equipment, or really any other method of introduction. Anytime I know something that's not right with the tank, corals look angry, polyps not out, receding tissue, changing out the carbon, and attempting to remove any of the potential irritants is my first step in solving any potential issue. We sell three different types of carbon, bituminous, lignite, and ROX 0.8. And while they all look somewhat similar, they have pretty significant advantages. But the selection's pretty easy. Bituminous carbon is what most of the aquarium industry uses because it's low cost, hard, and because of the hardness, has pretty minimal dusty fines, which makes it easy to rinse and pretty user friendly. But because it has a smaller average pore size, it will be somewhat lower performance than the other options, something that you can compensate for by using more. The BRS bituminous carbon is what we call a special grade bituminous because it's known for having a larger than average pore size for bituminous carbons, making it both higher performance and most cost effective. Bituminous is what we would recommend to anyone looking for an easy to use, low cost effective solution. Lignite carbon, on the other hand, is known for having a very large average pore size, which is ideal for large organic compounds and contaminants that are common in the reef tank. That said, there is a trade-off for the network of predominantly large pores, which is a soft carbon, which means it will have considerably more dusty fines and takes a bit more effort to rinse. If you use lignite in a reactor, flushing the unwanted fines out is quick and super easy, but if you're using a filter bag, it can take a couple of minutes to get all those fines rinsed out, which may seem like an eternity if you're used to the 10 seconds that many other carbon types take. This is particularly true of the smaller particle lignite carbon, which I'd honestly only use in a reactor because it is difficult to rinse in a filter bag. That said, the small particle will be the highest performance of the two lignite carbons because of the more accessible pore network and resulting surface area. The smaller particles will also significantly reduce water channeling around the carbon rather than through it and have increased performance. I would recommend lignite to reefers who want high performance at a really affordable price and willing to put in the bit of extra effort to use it. That said, I'd personally only use lignite in a reactor where it's easy to rinse the dust out in a non-issue. The ROX 0.8 actually combines the benefits of both and then builds upon that for the best carbon that we offer. First, ROX 0.8 is a proprietary blend of a variety of different raw carbon materials which span a wide range of pore sizes, making the most effective carbon on the widest range of contaminants. Even though it does come at a higher price point than bituminous or lignite, you can use much less, so dollar for dollar, it might not be all that different in the end. ROX is designed for use in pharmaceutical applications where it's not just critical that it performs the best at contaminant removal and meets the standards for that high demand industry, but it also can't add anything to the water. Because of that, it's been washed and purified to meet those exacting needs. The carbon comes in tiny little pellets which are designed specifically for use in water purification applications which maximize the amount of available surface area as well as reduces channeling. ROX 0.8 is also the hardest carbon we sell, which means it rinses in a snap in a reactor, and even a filter socket rinses clean in like five seconds with near zero effort. So if you can't tell already, ROX is my personal suggested carbon for almost every instance, and what everyone here uses, because it's not just the best performance, but also the easiest to use from a rinsing perspective. While it does cost a bit more, a single container will last most people a year or more, and you can use less, so it's likely about the same net cost. 
Using carbon is super easy and we always suggest starting small. We do have a calculator for how much to use, but for ROX we suggest starting with a single tablespoon for every 10 gallons of tank water, one and a half tablespoons for every 10 gallons with lignite, and two tablespoons per 10 gallons with bituminous. So most reefers with a standard tank size will find themselves using anywhere between a half a cup and a cup and a half of carbon, so not a whole lot. The two common methods of using carbon is a simple filter sock and a reactor. With a filter sock, you simply throw the carbon in a bag, rinse it until the water runs clear, and then throw it into a high flow area of the tank. If you can, find a location that actually flows the water over and through the bag. When rinsing, make sure to let the water just flow through the bag until it runs clear. Don't attempt to wash it or grind it back and forth because you're just creating more dust to rinse. The filter bag obviously is the cheapest, in many ways the easiest solution, but really not the most efficient or effective. Using it in a reactor of some type where a pump actually forces the water through the media and cycles virtually every drop of water in the tank through it many times a day is going to be a much higher performance implementation. When selecting a reactor, it's important to select the one that has a method for holding the carbon in place so it doesn't tumble around. Tumbling may look cool, but even with the hardest of carbons, it's just grinding against itself and creating more fines, which will be released into the tank. So never ever tumble carbon. There's zero benefit to tumbling carbon and only downsides. The BRS reactor is by far the most popular option, primarily because the design allows for easy cleaning and media changes. Just unscrew the canister and take it and the internal cartridge to the sink. All the pump, hoses, and cords can stay put. In most cases, the mini BRS reactor is probably large enough for carbon use alone, and the smaller cartridge holds the carbon in place really easily. With the larger 10-inch reactor, you can slide the foam pad up to hold the carbon in place. If you're looking for a carbon or media reactor which is a bit larger or with acrylic design, I'd look for something that can hold the carbon in place again. One of the better options is the Vertex reactor which has a sliding plate that can accommodate the exact amount of carbon that you want to use. Rinsing the carbon with any reactor is super easy. Just remove the return line from the reactor, place it in a bucket, and turn the pump on until the water runs clear, which normally takes less than 30 seconds with almost any type of carbon. If you are using lignite, I might let it run just a bit longer and turn the pump on and off a couple of times just to make sure that you got all the dusty fines out. After that, just adjust the flow rate down to something pretty low. Just a steady stream. This isn't an exact science, and because it is a closed system, which is going to get many passes a day, it just isn't that critical that you get the flow rate perfect. I would note that slower with carbon means more contact time and better performance and less detritus in the reactor. Carbon maintenance is pretty simple. You just need to change it out periodically. Regardless of what any manufacturer says, activated carbon in a reef tank actually doesn't last all that long. Well, the carbon itself has a tremendous potential to capture and remove a wealth of contaminants over a long period of time. In a reef tank, the outer pore structure often gets rapidly clogged with detritus and a bacterial biofilm, which makes the inner pore structure unavailable fairly rapidly. Another reason why the smaller pellets and particles are a better option in a reef tank. The lion's share of the effectiveness will be in the first week, but we suggest replacing it every couple weeks or when you perform other elements of general maintenance. You can let it go as long as a month between changes, but it probably isn't doing a whole lot towards the end, and there'll likely be some organic buildup. For that reason, you may want to use slightly more than we suggest if you're going to change the media out less frequently. That's about all there is to running carbon on a reef tank. If you have any other questions, we have a whole team of reefers here, so give us a call, email, or open a quick chat. We're glad to help. See you in the next BRS TV Spotlight.